What's up everybody and welcome back to another edition of The Dig, a series dedicated to helping you improve profitability on your farm. In this episode, we're gonna get down and dirty, talking about a topic on everyone's minds, weeds. I'm Aaron, this is Colin, let's dig in. What comes to mind when discussing yield loss caused by weeds? Typically, the most common answer revolves around the direct competition of weeds for key resources like water, nutrients, and sunlight. Other causes of yield reduction due to weed competition include changes to plant morphology, delayed nodulation in soybeans, changes in the crop stem diameter, and also reduced photosynthetic rate. Lastly, timing of grain development as well. All of these can lead to a plant's inability to tolerate in-season stretches such as drought and disease. Aaron, I got a joke for you. What is the easiest weed to control? I don't know, a dead one? <laughs> no, the easiest weed to control is the one that never emerges. Oh, Think about it like that. Yeah. Yeah. As weeds continue to adapt, we get more resistance to herbicides. Sustainable control has become increasingly more challenging to achieve. So the real question is, how do we prevent weeds in the first place to ensure that they don't steal our yields? Well, the first and most obvious answer is the use of herbicides. After all, a soybean is only as good as the herbicide system behind it. So developing an effective herbicide program is essential. Our multi-year data has demonstrated the impact and importance of utilizing a pre-emergence program with multiple sites of action. This graph shows the visual control percentage on water hemp populations when one of three sites of action are used in a pre-emergence application. The foundation to a successful weed control program starts with the power in the pre. A successful pre-emerge herbicide can help us reduce the amount of weed pressure in a post-emergent application. Many post-emergent applications are sprayed in the early vegetative stage. However, data shows a significant yield reduction can occur by delaying weed removal until the post-emergent trip. This highlights the negative impact on early weed competition and demonstrates the power in the pre. Let's give our friend Scott Dickey a call to learn more about putting the power in the pre. What's up, Scott? How are you today? Hey, Scott. Good, how's it going, you guys? Not too bad. Pretty good. Hey, just wanted to pick your brain a little bit on, you know, multiple sites of action and, and power of the pre and just really give us some insight on how we can really make our herbicide programs more effective. Uh, power and pre is so important, you know, because when we think about the best scenario, and you guys have probably already mentioned it, but uh, easiest weed to kill is one that doesn't ever emerge. So when I think about uh, things that we need to be doing, we need to think about multiple sites of action in our weed control program. And, uh, you know, when we look at some of our PFR data, we see about a 29% increase in hard to control weeds like water hemp when we use two versus one site of action. And then we see a, up to a 37% increase in control when we go from three sites of action from one. Consider the weed spectrum you have present in your field and that those multiple sites of action are effective for the weeds that you have present. So that, that's just some of the keys I think we need to think about. So Scott, what's the best program to be able to you know, set up for success for those, for those uh, winter annuals? You know, when, when I think about some of the pressures we run into, you're right, you know, winter annuals play a big role in some of the weed control programs we have to develop. And so one potential tool is to potentially use some uh, fall applied programs to help us reduce pressures from things like henbit and chickweed. And if we can keep those guys out of, out of our way, it makes it easier for us to set up a spring program that allows us to focus on things like water hemp in season. Additional methods for boosting weed control. Start clean, stay clean. Use an effective tillage program or an appropriate burn down herbicide eight to 10 days prior to planting. One of our PFR proven success strategies for soybeans is focused on row width. Canopy closure is one of the best defenses to prevent the germination of weeds. The competition from canopy closure will reduce the amount of light, making it harder for weeds to germinate. When applying a pre-emergence herbicide, followed by an in-season residual, the goal is for that blanket of protection to last until canopy closure. Therefore, it's critical for the residual herbicide to last until that canopy closure timeframe, which may not occur on wider rows. PFR proven data shows narrow rows can help reduce water hemp pressure in those untreated checks. In this study, the 15 inch row widths average 31% fewer water hemp compared to the 30 inch rows. The narrow rows allow for faster canopy closure, making that herbicide program more successful. Application timing and time of day. What is the time to apply the herbicide to ensure that they're most effective and cost efficient? For pre-emerge programs, our PFR data shows that 21 days before planting is optimal for weed control. Herbicide additives, when applied with a pre-emergent herbicide, additives can help boost yields and profitability. 2021 was the first year we conducted a study in PFR across multiple locations testing Foster FC and Taurus Sulfur. Both products provided a small yield increase in their first year of testing. We'll keep testing these products to see if they stand up to the challenge of earning a PFR proven status though. Let's talk about water conditioning. 
Can AMS and water conditioners improve efficacy on herbicides and make them more efficient? High pH and hard water can be detrimental to some foliar applied herbicides. We have tested a number of products in PFR, including Brant Indica 5, which is PFR proven, AMS and Choice Trio, all of which have provided yield gains and positive ROI in our multi-location studies. Brant Indica 5 lowers pH and counters the effect of hard water ions as a bonus. It also acts as a wetting and spreading agent to help with penetration because as we all know, coverage is key. Herbicides are great. We all love them. But in this unprecedented year, farmers need weed control options that don't always rely on inputs alone. With that being said, let's call up Camille down in Kentucky and get her thoughts on some of these alternative weed control methods that are out there for farmers. We've been talking a lot about herbicides in this video, but I wanna change gears a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about other options on, on weed control. What, what's some other options that, that farmers could be doing to be able to control those weeds? Sure, so I'm in Kentucky. We've got kind of two extremes. Tillage, it's actually a very good method of weed control. So you're stirring up the seed bank. Weeds are active for years in the soil. So if we can get them down low, we can keep them from ever emerging. Another really good option is cover crops. So right now it's obviously too late to go plant cover crops, but anytime you can keep some cover on the soil surface, it's gonna keep some of those weeds suppressed because the sunlight isn't able to penetrate all the way down to the soil surface. So really good method. There is some data, however, out of Canada showing that any presence of weeds, even when that soybean or corn seed is germinating, it can affect the plant for its entire life cycle. So we wanna make sure we kill off whatever weed pressure, even cover crops, before the plant start to germinate because it will affect the whole growing season. Whew, so that was a lot of information. Are you overwhelmed? I'm a little overwhelmed. <laughs> so at the end of the day, we need to be able to control these weeds as best as possible with what works best on our farms, whether that's herbicide, tillage, cover crop, or all three. Yeah, so every farm is gonna be different. We need to try the different things, play around, and figure out what works best for you. And if you need some good herbicide recommendations, I encourage you to get a hold of one of our herbicide recommendation brochures. It's really more like a book. It's got a lot of good information in there to let you know what herbicides work best on weeds that you may be dealing with on your farm. With that being said, thanks for watching another episode of The Dig, and Colin and I, we're, we're out. out. Oh, and that's, uh, yeah, I guess I need to keep talking about that. That's you, bud. Yeah, it goes into the details. Friends are here. Pigeons are here. <laughs> You're late. Oh, I can figure out where I'm at. Okay. And now I just need to need more wait, data. Uh, wing it Wednesday, wing Tuesday. It. Wing, wing it Tuesday. Tuesday. I'm rolling. So who wants to? Who wants uh, to Whoa. Let's, let's Whoa. talk to this real quick. Easy guy. You're not I'm the sorry. cameraman. You I'm don't know. Sorry.